If you want to start making your own game controllers with Arduino, look no further. So over the past couple of months I've been making some peripherals for playing sim games. I made a steering wheel, a force feedback, some pedals, a handbrake and just recently an H shifter. And during those videos we've gone through construction of the project itself. I've had a couple of requests for some from some uh, viewers on how to go from zero to working with Arduino and that's what I'm going to cover over today. So we're going to cover a few details today about the boards you can use, um, setting up the software, a few gotchas, and finally configuring our one of my pedals to get up and running on a sim game. So I guess one of the first gotchas is the control board you can use. There's obviously several types of Arduino you can get. There's dozens actually. Some of them have been uh, retired. Some of them are still going. You can't just use any Arduino to make a game controller. It's got to be a specific type with a specific type of chips in it. Unfortunately, so if you've got an Arduino Uno or something like that, this won't work. You've got to um, get one with this particular chip which communicates over USB properly. And for simplicity, we'll just call those the, the Arduino Leonardo and the Arduino Pro Micro. For the Arduino, it's the traditional um, Arduino sort of shape, these big sort of square Uno type boards. You wouldn't really know the difference really between the two unless you saw the writing on it. So this would be, this is the one I used in the steering wheel I made. I don't, didn't have to use this particular one, it's just the same one I had to get to um, easily enough. And the other one you use is the Pro uh, Micro. So here's the Pro Micro, it's slightly, it's, it's smaller and they come with all sorts of different variants as well. There's lots of Chinese knockoffs. I mean the main part about these two controllers is they're quite expensive compared to your regular Arduino Unos sometimes twice twice the price but for that USB functionality that we need we need to use one of these controllers unfortunately um, I can use um, the cheaper ESP32's over Bluetooth I'm not going to cover that in this video but if you're interested in making your pedals and gear stick and handbrake or wireless and let me know in the comments I'll make a follow-up video to this one but in this video we're just covering just the straight Arduino connected to your computer so once you've got your controller sorted out and you know which one you want to use, just the next thing you need to do is get the software and we can only really get that from one place and, it, and it's free so it's painless. Just go to the Arduino or Google Arduino and then across the top here we've got a button for software and there's two versions of Arduino software. There's a 2.3.2 .2 and down the bottom we've got the Legacy 1.8.1. I'm always going to be using this one. Um, maybe the new one might be better, I'm not too sure. I've never used it and I'm, I've never had any problems with 1.8 so I'm just going to stick with that for now and suggest you do the same. Any tutorials that come up with in the future will probably always be around this version of Arduino. Down on the right here we've just got the version so download the one you want and install it. Okay so here's our Arduino environment and we've got um, just some simple code here which doesn't really do anything it's just some empty code so you can get up and running. So there's millions of Arduino uh, tutorials out there which are going to be way better than this one for learning Arduino. This one, we just want to get up and running right, we don't want to go through the whole process of learning everything, we just want to um, hook our pedal up and start. But before we do that we need to make sure that everything's kind of working. So I've plugged in my Pro Micro here. It's lit up so I know it's getting power and the cable must be good. And the next thing I want to do is check to see if it's actually connected to the software so the software can see it. So if we go to tools, we've got a COM port here. And it comes up with a list of COM ports. This is how it communicates with the Arduino. And we can see clearly it's got Arduino Micro. So it's, it's picked it correctly. It might say something different when you click to uh, Leonardo. Nothing fact it does say Arduino Leonardo. So we've got to click make sure we connect to the correct COM port to communicate to the board. The other thing we need to do is we need to tell the software which board we're using because it generally won't be able to pick it up by itself what it's working with so we go to our Arduino AVR boards. Uh, for me I'm using the Micro so I've chosen Micro and if you're using a Leonardo you would choose the Leonardo. Depending on which board you have plugged in is which one you want to choose here to program it. So we'll stick with the Micro like we did and now technically we should be able to program to it but we want to make sure that's working and if we go up to file examples basics 
uh, we've got a blink sketch and this is pretty much the uh, hello world of Arduino so if we can get a light to blink we can know we're connected and we can we can program to it uh, if you were going to use the Leonardo off the bat this would work you just plug it in fire it down and away it goes but for the Pro Micro you can see something here called LED built in it's not assigned to anything on the micro as far as I know so where we see LED built in we just need to change that to 17 because on this micro it's got all these pins on it and each pin has got a number and each number of pin does a different job and I'm just looking researching pin 17 is for one of the lights that are on here so if I change this LED built in to 17 and then I click on this button here which is the upload button it'll go away and can make a few beeping sounds and tell me it's done and then we have a blinking light so this tells me that I'm definitely connected to my controller the lights blinking so I'll be able to program it so I can move on to next steps which is uh, programming in the software or the code to make my pedal work so if you've downloaded the file which I've supplied with the STLs the, the guide to build everything and it'll have all this software as well and copy and paste that or open it into your Arduino and program it it'll probably come up with an error if you've only just installed Arduino because this, the, the code I'm using is using a, a, a library. If we look at the top of the screen here it's got include joystick.h and it's a, a like a subset of tasks which are already pre-programmed or in a, in a library that this code is going to draw from to program the, um, the joystick up. So we need to install that in our Arduino for it to work. And we can just download that joystick library off the internet. So if we go into Google and type in Arduino joystick. And our top result here is Arduino joystick library. So we just click on that one. And under code, choose download zip to somewhere you know on your computer. So once we've downloaded that, we've just got to add it to Arduino. So we go into sketch include library add a zip library and then you will just choose the zip file you just downloaded and install it i've already done it on this computer so there's no point doing it again but once that's done when we go into um program the arduino now you shouldn't get an error code down the bottom saying we can't find it it doesn't understand what any of these definitions are uh, that's the sort of setup for a, a, a variable resistor uh, so it wants the value but as you turn the value up and down on the resistor it'll give the signal out to the computer saying where the, where the pedal is we're using a Hall effect uh, sensor because it's just, um, just better, less wires, nice and tidy so I've hooked up my pedal here, this is from the build video we did originally it was originally plugged into the um, steering wheel but this is stand alone at the moment and I've got my sensor here and uh, I've got three wires coming off it, so there's three connectors on the sensor. There's a ground, a power, and a signal out. And we just want to connect those to our uh, Pro Micro. So power obviously goes to power and ground, and one of them is going to be signal pin. And we decide what the pin is in our code here. So when it comes to connecting the Arduino up to our pedal, we've got to connect it to a particular pin. So we've got the power, and we've got the ground, and we've got the signal wire so the signal wire needs to go to one of the analog pins so if we look at the diagram which is very similar to the one I've got we can see we've got these pins marked as A and that means analog so it has the ability to convert signals from analog a variable value variable voltage to a digital signal inside the controller so it can work out what to do with whatever data is coming in so this one sees it's got 10 analog pins we've only got three pedals, throttle, brake and clutch. So we'll use one of these pins or assign one of these pins in our code to get that signal in and then send that data to the computer to say whether it's the throttle's moving up or down. For my code I'm just I'm going to use A1 for the accelerator and we look at the code in the for Arduino. We define the pedal here. So A1 so I'll plug my pedal Hall effect sensor into A1 of my Pro Micro 
and it should give us the signal as an output on the screen. So got my pedal all wired up now, it's connected via USB, I've just got these header rows, you should probably be soldering straight into this connector because you don't want to hear this like, fall off. Uh, and we're straight in and what I can do is I'll just jump in and program the controller just go up with this code which will be supplied with the um, STLs and that you press go okay so it's done for this particular code I've got this special part here called serial and what that means is it's going to be sending data out to us so we can actually see what's happening when we're moving the pedal so if I go to tools and serial monitor It's constantly streaming out the value that's um, coming from the tool. So if I push the pedal back and forward, you should see the number here, or well, both numbers should be changing. So when I push it forward, we can see the value changes. So it goes from 650, which is um, not pushed in at all, to 870 which means it's pushed in so with the Hall effect sensor with a pot this value will be going from 0 to 1024 and then if we're in between with the Hall effect sensor it's not that sensitive right you've only got a few a couple of hundred steps it'll change so we just need to change our code to convert that to a higher value so we look back at our screen, on the left hand side is the value that's actually sending to our game on the right hand side is the actual value that's reading in from the pedal itself the value on the left we want to go up to 1000 which it does we don't want it on minus zero and you're just probably going to need to tweak those numbers slightly when um, this is the pedal is as far back as it can go the value on the left shouldn't be in minus number, it should be zero we want to sort of tweak our numbers just slightly so it's sort of 650 so on your Windows device, if you type in Setup USB, there's a Setup USB Game Controllers uh, feature here. We click on that, and we click on the Properties. It should detect your Arduino Micro there. If we click on the Properties, we'll come up this other dialog, and look at us the details of what it's getting back. So at the moment, we've got the throttle. We can see it's moving just a little bit there, and we want it to not do that at all. So we need to still tweak our numbers there slightly. But if I um, push my pedal down, we can see it's mapping this movement back in Windows so we, we know it's definitely working next thing we want to do is just hook it up to our game just to see if it'll um, detect that throttle position start uh, BeamNG so it's probably going to get a bit noisy here because my fan um, my laptop doesn't like the game because it uses too much processing power but if we go to f uh, options um, controls vehicle throttle at the moment if I hold down W it'll accelerate and we don't want that we want to use our cool new pedal here we click on plus uh, and if I push this it'll detect it so you can see on the screen there as I move the pedal back and forward it's picked it up on the uh, the UI there and we can, we can change dead zones as well so for that little bit we have a problem at the moment it's, we might want to add a, the dead zones there rather than tweak the software so it will still be zero we could go back and tweak the Arduino but if you don't want to muck around with that and you get a problem like this you can play with a dead zone in the game we'll click on apply and if we go back to the game and start up a level Here's our truck, and I'll hide me so you can see. And as I push the pedal down, you should see the revs go up and down. So I can hold it in a sort of position there if I want to, and we'll give it full throttle. So yeah, it works like a charm. So you're asking yourself, do I have to get three of these controllers to make this work? Well you don't, because you can program that this Pro Micro has got, like we saw, 10 analog inputs and we can just alter our code. We have analog one for the brake value and clutch value 
and because we've got 10 analog inputs we could probably also have all the pedals, like three pedals going into the spark controller and then use another two analog inputs for the gear shift so it's doing the whole thing at the same time so one controller, eight shifter the, um, and the pedals all at once it's not like you have to buy a controller for each one and then you just plug it straight into your um, computer again if you want a wireless version let me know in the comments and I'll um, go about setting that up there's obviously a chance of a bit of a delay with Bluetooth but I've not found it being too much of a problem so hopefully it's enough to get you up and running please let me know if it isn't uh, I think I've covered most things of course in the guide it's got there's step-by-step instructions as well this is just sort of a video prefer to learn things through video we're we'll releasing a new version of the guide because I've slightly redesigned the way this pedal's put together just to make it a bit um, more sturdy I don't have a problem with it before it's just the front bit where the spring goes through this a couple of things that went quite right and the code will obviously be available so if you've already got the original version the version one of this build guide you will automatically email out the other version to you the latest version with the latest code as well so you're not going to miss out if you haven't got the pedals already and all the code you should be able to see it sort of here and download it if you made it this part by all means subscribe we do have quite a bit of sim racing stuff around here and if you want to see the original video for this pedal um, check out over here thanks for watching